Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. This is going to be a pretty quick one, but I just want to talk about how the ChargePoint CPE 250 and the Express Plus, the higher power version, have become really the backbone, at least of Colorado, but actually of a ton of US charging infrastructure. I want to talk about why that's the case my impressions of the unit, tell you a little bit about them. And um, yeah, so it'll just be a little, I guess, blurb on ChargePoint's uh, DC fast charging stuff. Not sponsored, we've just been using them a bunch, exploring Colorado, you can see the trucks all dirty. We've been hitting trails before the winter season starts. And uh, honestly, our entire trip so far has just been on ChargePoint DC fast charging infrastructure, purely because of convenience. The locations have been great. So there's a whole video on why that's the case what ChargePoint has done to really take over the U.S. charging infrastructure and what I think the landscape may look like into the future. Let's get into it. First of all, before I tell you why I think this infrastructure has gotten so popular here, I want to at least tell you a little bit about it. And uh, the first thing you should know is I've done a full, I don't even know how long, well over one hour, two hours, I can't remember, deep dive tour of ChargePoint's engineering labs and uh, some of their R&D facilities. It's truly fascinating. If you want to know a, even a little bit about how charging infrastructure is created, how hardware is made, you have to watch this video because it goes through the entire ChargePoint business model as well as some of the R&D. It's, it's amazing. I'll leave it linked in the description. One of the best days at work ever. And um, you know, I guess the main thing is these units here are available in a few different configurations. Let me explain to you how this charger works. This is what's called an all-in-one or a monolith, as uh, you know, ChargePoint would say. The, basically, there are the onboard, onboard in the charger. The chargers are in here as well as the dispenser, and you can actually see the power electronics are, are right here. We have basically a. Let's take a look at the size of the transformer at this particular site. This is a 150 kVA transformer, which means roughly 150 kilowatt capable of power, hooked up to some switch gear, which is then feeding this charge point uh, Express 250. What's interesting about this particular installation is this is only hooked up to 50 kilowatts maximum. Now, of course, it has plenty of power to pull from the grid. I don't know why they wouldn't go to the maximum output of 62 and a half kilowatts. Uh, with one of these units here, but maybe there will be upgrades in the future. Maybe it's new and they're just working on tuning, but generally you'll find the ChargePoint Express 250s available in a CCS and Chatamo configuration up to 62 and a half kilowatts. Now, what's neat is many of these installations include two ChargePoint Express uh, 250s, where you might have one here and another one for the next parking spot. When you have two of them together, you can actually run another DC link between them and crank them up to 125 kilowatts, essentially doubling the power. So let's say there was another charger over here. It could take both of the charging capacities and charge my truck. That's cool. The main problem in those configurations are actually the cables. You can see they're quite thin, and that's probably the reason for the limitation on this one. They're typically limited to um, uh, 200 amps, which is about 80 kilowatts in those configurations for a 400 volt car. I actually think it's slightly misleading that the chargers are labeled as 125 kilowatts because the majority of EVs on the road would never be able to get that much power. Only the Hyundai Kia Genesis cars, uh, the 800 volt cars, Taycan and Lucid, of course, can get up close to that 125 kilowatt maximum because there's an amperage limitation. Anyway, doesn't really have much to do with this particular video. You guys know the drill if you're a longtime viewer of out of spec. So, um, you know, the hardware has just proven to be extremely reliable. Not the fastest thing, really lacking some cojones in my opinion, but uh, they just work temperatures doesn't matter they're just sort of like i said the backbone of american charging infrastructure if you will um, certainly here in colorado the extreme temperatures the extreme amount of evs on the road is really putting a strain on our high power charging infrastructure ev go electrify america experiencing constant and repeated failures as well as just providing annoying charging experiences to drivers these things you just plug in they pretty much are good to go they just rip um not the highest power but again a pretty consistent customer experience so that's why a i think they're attractive 
B, why are they in so many different places, usually just installed as one or two units? Well, it comes back to some of the funding schemes that are happening. Every state has their own plan, their own incentives to roll out high power charging infrastructure for electric vehicles. And of course, like I mentioned, there's federal funding, there's state funding, and then there's actually city and town initiatives that might install some of these. So when you have money to install charging, it's not saying you have to use this particular charger or this particular you know, type of unit. So why are charge point units so popular, both their level two as well as their DC charging infrastructure? And I really think it comes down to their sales team. Their internal sales team is has to be the best sales team of any high power charging infrastructure in the business. Um, the thing is, ChargePoint isn't just saying, here's a charger, good luck. They're selling an entire service when they sell a charger. Now, I'm not an expert in this. I can just piece together what it is, uh, my impressions of how this all works. But essentially, ChargePoint will approach Colorado or they will approach Carbondale, the city here. I don't know how it worked for this particular one. They'll say, hey, not only will we put in a charger, but we will also control all of the back end. And if you pay us monthly, we'll also service the unit to make sure it's completely available and ready for you to go. All great things here, but you're really missing one huge, huge point about the downfall of ChargePoint, which is the end user has to pay the bills to maintain it or else it's completely offline and nobody knows. Right, so you're absolutely correct, Alyssa. And that means that there are many instances where ChargePoint sells a package of charger plus a service contract to someone else. That then falls on that, you know, the station owner's responsibility to pay the service fee though, so that the station can continue operating and continue to be maintained. One of the biggest offenders of this actually is part of their level two solutions. Uh, the tabs fall off the J1772 connectors and they just completely, uh, you know, stop working essentially and they're no longer functional. It's uh, a totally accurate point that this whole solution that ChargePoint offers only works when the station owners continue to pay the monthly service fee, which is not cheap to keep the stations online because Anytime you're dealing with public infrastructure where you or me or Joe Schmo is operating and dealing with it, stuff's going to break. You have weather elements, a plow could come and knock this thing out. Like anything can happen in the real world and like crazy things that we couldn't even come up with happen all the time. Uh, they really, you know, station owners, when ChargePoint's selling this, they really have to make sure that there's a plan to keep the reliability high, keep the servicing high. And uh, yeah, you're totally right on that one, Alyssa. One last point, part of the service and upgrade is many vehicles are gonna be shipping natively with the North American charging standard point, uh, port. Just today, BMW announced BMW Mini and Rolls-Royce will have access to superchargers and have the NAX port. Charge points already ahead of the game. They already have their own cable working with NACs installed in the ground at their headquarters and more stations to come. It's up to that charge point sales team to talk to the existing infrastructure owners and say, hey, take the Chatamos off. I know the Leaf owners are going to freak out. I own a Leaf. I get it. But there's only two ports here and uh, maybe do CCS and NACs going forwards. Um, or at least maybe at least with new builds do NACs and CCS. I think uh, Chatham is kind of dead in this country, really screws over the early owners of Leafs like myself. Uh, I think Nissan owes it to their customers or Mitsubishi or, or whoever. Someone needs to come up with a Chatamo to Nax adapter. It shouldn't be that difficult. Will require some communication and logic, but uh, that's really the only path forward to continue keeping those cars on the road. So what they're selling is a solution rather than a hardware device. And I think that's where charge points you know, extreme level of uh, infiltration of our percentage of DC charging hardware comes from. They're selling the entire front to back solution. They have their own installation providers. They'll take care of it. All the city has to do is write a check, drop in, you know, they just write a check. Here's where you put it. And then they pay monthly for the servicing and uptime in that unit. It's not cheap but it's easy and it has an amazing back end service and a pretty good proven track record. Now for the driver, what this means is you have a little bit of different experience at different units depending on pricing. Uh, it's up to, I believe, the city or the owner of the station to set pricing in these scenarios. So we've seen them, for example, in Georgetown, Colorado, they have 200 kilowatt charge point express plus units. Those are 49 cents per kilowatt hour plus 20 cents per minute 
after a certain number of time. It's very expensive. And then you'll find other places like Leadville, Colorado, that was only 35 cents per kilowatt hour and no parking fee while charging. I really think this whole idea of charging a parking fee while you're actually getting juice uh, as part of the charging makes no sense. I understand you want to increase throughput, charge an idle fee when charging is done, but not an additional parking fee. And these are things that we want to make people more aware of in future videos. So um, really, this is just a, a, you know, my, my explanation as to why are there so many charge point units in the ground when there's other also fantastic charging infrastructure uh, on sale. It is because ChargePoint has figured out the magic of having a knowledgeable and easy sales process. That's a solution of providing charging rather than saying, by our hardware, just our charger. So um, yeah, I think it's pretty magical. The units are pretty reliable. The charge point themselves are great people. We've done a bunch with them. And um, yeah, just like <laughs> our whole trip so far, it's been days. We've only plugged this truck into charge point infrastructure. And I was just like, wow, this is all happening. And I haven't really been talking about it. We charged at a charge point level two station at our hotel. We charged at charge point DC fast chargers to get to Snowmass, and now we're heading to, uh, where are we going, Alyssa? Crested Butte. Crested Butte, and then we can also use charge points to get back, although I think we're gonna try and use the Rivian Adventure Network Charger in Salida, uh, just because it's been a while since we were there, and we were the first ones to plug into that when it went online. So anyway, just a little PSA, that's why these things are so freaking popular, because they're selling the solution, not just the hardware, and it's very easy for the city and states who are not experts on charging to just say, leave it up to someone else. And ChargePoint does a pretty good job. My only request would be higher power cables, um, especially on the, ex well, on both units. So when you have them hooked up to 125 kilowatt version branded as this, it needs, you know, 300 amp cables or something just to provide the juice and the charge point express pluses seemingly are only on 350 amp cables for the most part. Those really should be 500 amp cables, liquid cooled uh, to provide the juice. So I hope the charge point sales team can explain the benefits of higher current cables so that those putting in the chargers means like, you know, when it says 200 kilowatts and I roll up in my Rivian, I'll actually get 200 kilowatts. They had little, little things to go, but at the end of the day, the chargers work, they rip, and uh, it's a great solution. Thanks for watching. See you at another one soon. We're going to continue having fun in the mountains. Bye-bye.